Merhaba arkadaşlar, hepiniz IFT Talks webinarlarına hoş geldiniz. Bugün İngiltere'nin en yaratıcı üniversitelerinden Goldsmiths University of London'da programlar ve bursları Jack'ten dinliyor olacak. Lütfen sorularınızı questions kısmından sormayı unutmayın. Yes, Jack, the stage is yours now. Brilliant, thank you so much. So firstly, thank you everyone for taking the time to uh, come and uh, hear me talk today. Uh, so my name is Jake Longley and I work for Goldsmiths University of London. Um, just to let you know at the start, I've in the chat window, I've put um, <clears throat> excuse me, links to our website, there's my contact information and quite a few YouTube videos that show you there's campus tours, there's information on what it's like to study at a university and a lot of the videos are student presented. You get to hear from the students themselves, not just people like me. But anyway, I'm just going to quickly share my screen and then I can start this presentation. Okay, here we go. So, um, hopefully you can see my screen now. It's like I said a second ago, my name is Jake. My contact information is here on the screen and it's also in that chat window. So if you've got any questions, feel free to email me. Likewise, my mobile telephone number is here as well. So if you guys are on WhatsApp, Telegram, Signal, like any messaging app you can think of, you can guarantee I'm probably on it. Feel free to send me a text, send me an email, and I'll be more than happy to help. So I'm going to present to you today Goldsmiths, give you an idea of where we are, what London is like, what, what we offer, what programs we offer, and what studying with us is like as well. So let's get started. So Goldsmiths was founded in 1891, and we've been part of the University of London since 1904. We're the 60th most international university in the world, and we're consistently ranked inside the UK's top 25 for the quality of our research. The two um, statements on the left from 2017, but these get awarded every single year. So even in 2020, we got these as well. Goldsmiths was voted one of the UK's top creative and political universities by students. And in 2017, London was voted the joint top best university city in the world. But since 2018, 2019, 2020, it's been voted the top, so singular, on its own, the top university city in the world, the best place for you to study. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Goldsmiths itself, we're quite a small university. We have 10,000 students. The average UK size for a university is about 17,000 students. We have a student to staff ratio of 15 students to one member of staff. This again is quite small. The UK average is about 25 to 30 students to one member of staff. So this means at Goldsmiths, you get a lot more contact time, a lot closer relationship with your lecturers, with your academics, so you can get more information out of them and progress through your studies with that way. Um, Goldsmiths itself has students that come from 141 different nationalities, 20% of our students from outside the EU, so 2,000 students from outside the 27 countries that make the EU. Our actual demographics though, are really great. We're a really strong, diverse university. 40% of our students are Black, Asian or other minority ethnic backgrounds. 60% of our student body um, are female. So I'm going to show you a bit about London um, at the moment. So some really exciting things you may already know or um, you know may not know about London. Maybe you visited, maybe you, me, you haven't. So the photo at the top is Oxford Circus. It's where all of our main shops are. You guys will probably know it from films if you've not visited. Bottom left is a place called Shoreditch Box Park. This is a really great place where there's restaurants and cafes. Um, Shoreditch is a really great place to go out in the evening as well. Some really fabulous bars and nightclubs. On the right is Borough Market. This is quite close to the university, a really famous food market, really great place to hang out. And at the bottom in the middle, um, you can see the Shard. That's a big glass building. We call it the Shard because it looks like a shard of glass. It's the tallest building in Western Europe. And it's based at London Bridge, which is about five to 10 minutes from our campus. And that uh, bridge you can see in the middle, quite often people think that is London Bridge, but that in fact is Tower Bridge. And a fun fact for you, so I'm not from London, but I've lived here about seven and a half years now, but all my family is from London. Um, and my grandfather was actually the man used to open that bridge in the 1960s and 70s for ships to go through. So here we have this wonderful map um, showing you just the city centre. So London is a very big place, but this is just the city. So some things I expect a lot of you guys will know. So on the left, you can see it says in letters, Big Ben. So that's where the Houses of Parliament are. Um, just to the left, you see Buckingham Palace, which is where the Queen lives. Up to the left, where it says Selfridges, that is where Oxford Circus is. 
In the middle of the map, you can see it says the Shard. That's that glass building I was just talking about. And so where it says the Shard, that is where London Bridge is, both the bridge and the train station. At the bottom right, it says Goldsmiths in pink. That's where we are. We're in an area called New Cross. It's a really lovely residential place um, in London, really quiet. But to get from us to London Bridge, like I said a second ago, it takes about five to 10 minutes by train. We've got two train stations, New Cross Gate and New Cross. He's both going to London Bridge for so five to 10 minutes. So to get from us at the bottom right to Selfridges at the top left takes about 20 minutes. So you can get from outside the city center right into the thick of it in about 20 minutes. It's a really great um, sort of uh, way to get around the city really quick and easy to get from our campus to anywhere. London itself, a lot of you guys may know this, is quite a famous city, but it's a very big place, 620 square miles. We have 8 million inhabitants. We have 250 museums. A really great statistic of it shows how metropolitan and cosmopolitan the city is. There are over 320 languages spoken by 240 different nationalities in this city. So not only have you got everyone, there's 141 nationalities at Goldsmiths, there's another 100 nationalities in London to learn from, to develop friendships and relationships with, just to really experience this whole culture. We have over 6,000 licensed restaurants and a really great thing to try the first time you come to London is to write down the alphabet down the side of a piece of paper, so A, B, C, D, um, and then think of a country for each letter and see if you can find a restaurant in the city that offers that kind of food. I can guarantee you for every single letter you can do it. I did it when I first moved to London. It's a really great place to go around. There's 500,000 students in the city and there's 15 million tourists that will visit this city every year. And that's more than New York, San Francisco and Sydney in Australia combined. That's how popular London is. We've got over 500 cinema screens. We have 32,000 music performances each year. If you can think of a type of music from anywhere in the world, you can guarantee there is either a concert or a festival that does that sort of type of music. And to add to this, we have 250 different music festivals in the city each year. So like I said a second ago, if you can think of a type of music, so pop, rock, metal, hip hop, dance, but then Indian music, Chinese music, Turkish music, you can guarantee there is a festival that does that sort of music. We've got over 100 theatres, the famed West End is where a lot of plays start or will be the second stop after Broadway in New York. We've got five international airports all within about an hour, half an hour of the city. We've got 143 parks. London is considered the greenest city in Europe for the number of parks it has. So if you guys ever need any peace and quiet from the noise and the chaos of the city, there's always somewhere that you can just chill out, find some peace and find some calm and just reset yourself. And in terms of sports, we've got 19 professional football clubs. My team, Crystal Palace, were not very good, but I love them. They're based just south of where I live. And also London is over 2,000 years old now, actually. Um, so there's so much history on every street corner, so much to learn and experience when you're here. So some things to consider as well when you're choosing if, you, you know, if you're going to study in London and which university you're going to study at. There's about 30 universities in London. Um, and each one of these is um, not a single site campus. This means you have to travel between buildings, between areas of London to get to your lectures. Um, but there's about five or six that are a single campus. And we are one of them. Every building you need to study is located inside the yellow dotted line at the bottom of this map. That is our campus. That has our library, our lecture theatres, our classrooms, our media studios, our art and design studios, all different labs. All of our staff um, are based on this site. Everything is there for you. We've also got eight accommodation buildings. There are six located on this map. So there is one right on the campus, a really big block of um, students. Apartments. So if you stay in that camp, in that uh, building, you've never got an excuse for being late to class because you'll, you'll take you 30 seconds to get from your halls to your, your classroom. We've got four that are just over the road. You can see them just around uh, on the right hand side. So again, a couple of minutes to get to the campus. The one at the top right, 
looks quite far away, but I actually live just down the road from there. And it takes me 10 minutes to walk from my flat to the campus each time I go to work. The final two are not on this map. They're a little bit further west of our campus. They're in an area called Camberwell, but it honestly takes about 15 minutes by bus to get from Camberwell to Goldsmiths. The bus ride is really easy. It's one road, it's a straight road. It's about five stops, really, really easy to do. So there's nothing to worry about there. But also from this photo, you can see just how close we are to the city. It's just there at the top and you can see the train lines going in and just how quick it is to get to the city from where we are. So to think about um, our campus as well, we've got a real mix of heritage and modern buildings on our site. We, when we were founded in 1891, it was on this campus um, in these buildings. So the photo at the bottom left is the, um, the Richard Hoggart building. That is where we were founded. That is the original building. Bottom right um, is an area, is a building called the Deptford Town Hall. It used to be a town hall for the local area, but it's now part of our campus. Um, excuse me. And it's also where we now have some of our art studios. So this is quite an old building as well. Top left is the Professor Stuart Hall building. Um, and this is a brand new building. I think it's about three years old, so not totally brand new, but still quite new. Um, this is where our media production studios are and all the different media facilities. And top right is the Ben Pimlock building. This is where our design studios are. It's got this kind of squiggle sculpture on top of it. And you can see the shard just poking out off in the distance there as well. So like I said, there's a real mix of heritage and modern uh, buildings on our campus. We've got some really wonderful cafes and a canteen that cater for lots of different diets. We've got a really amazing library. We've got our own cinema. We've got gym and tennis courts, accommodation both on the campus and very, very close by. And there's some really wonderful healthcare both on the campus and really close by as well. Like lots of brilliant um, NHS doctors that are very close. It's really easy to sign up, really easy and quick to get an appointment. They'll know you're a student at Goldsmiths. They'll know some of your concerns. It'll be really easy to speak to them. So it's a really sort of great place to be, our local area. So let's think about the area as well. I kind of touched upon it earlier, but we're in a really dynamic urban and multicultural part of Southeast London. We have lots of communities from all around the world in our local area. It's a really nice, quiet residential area as well. But at the same time, because we're very much a student area, there's lots of really great things to do and see around here before you even get into the city. So there's lots of really amazing green spaces, like I talked about earlier with our parks. There's actually a park next to our campus called Telegraph Hill. As you'd imagine, it's on a hill and you can see all of London there. So when you're um, when it's the summer, it's a really great place to hang out. But then also we've got some really amazing art galleries, live music venues, bars, restaurants, nightclubs, um, some really, really great places to, to hang out before you even go into the city, which I said earlier is, you know, five to 10 minutes by train to London Bridge. So just to sort of recap, we're at the bottom right where it says Goldsmiths. And just to add to this, just to the left of where it says Goldsmiths, it says South London in black. Behind that, it says Camberwell in grey. So Camberwell is where I said two more of our accommodation buildings are. At Camberwell, there's another art college, a different um, organisation from Goldsmiths. But we're connected to Camberwell by this single road. Between Camberwell and New Cross, where Goldsmiths is, there's an area called Peckham. So all of our students, both Goldsmiths and then this other institution, all of our students live in this area. So it's a really, really great place to hang out, to see things, to meet people from all around the world. Like I said, before you even get into the city, there's lots of really wonderful things to do in this area. So something to think about when you go to a university in the UK as well is the clubs and societies that are available. Now these are student-led organizations, student-led clubs and societies. And what they are is they, um, students get together and make a club if they have a particular interest. So we have politics clubs, music, faith, academy, uh, academic societies, things like this. So it's a good chance for you to meet people outside of your course outside of your class and outside of your accommodation who are into the same things as you each university has different clubs and societies so you can find some that are very similar across all universities so like dance cheerleading karate boxing football there's some that are a bit different at goldsmiths is our chocolate society i've not seen one at another university but what the chocolate society do is they get together once a month and they share chocolate from all around the world and talk about how brilliant chocolate is it's a really lovely thing to do. 
But some of the other things you can expect to see at Goldsmiths, we have a really amazing LGBTQ plus society. Um, Hacksmiths, this is actually our most popular society. Um, this is um, students who love to learn how to code and build software and things like this. So they get together really quite frequently share ideas, work on projects outside of their class, also share information from their classes. We have things like, um, so just one example, the Christian Union community, we have lots of different faith societies, the vegetarian and vegan society, photography, taekwondo, yoga, but then um, all the women out there, if you're thinking about playing football, our women's football team is the, actually the best university team in London. This is a great team to get involved with, great place to meet people, and a great activity to be involved with. And final point on societies, our drama society. So they put on performances, so both comedy, musical and drama, different theatre productions. And each year they go up to the Edinburgh Festival in Edinburgh, Scotland, put on performances um, to members of the public, but also to people who work in the industry. So we have lots of students who are not studying drama, who have gone on to have very successful careers in TV, in theatre, in movies, by being involved in this society and going and doing performances like that. So it's just a brief idea of who we are so far, all these countless paths that come together to make one goldsmiths. So now we're going to talk about this kind of subjects we do and what makes goldsmiths goldsmiths. So this is, um, I think it's almost all of our departments, but what goldsmiths do is we're considered an arts, humanities and social sciences university. So we teach programs like art and design, we teach media, music, but then we also study so uh, sociology, psychology, anthropology, politics and international relations, law, different programs like this. And what we look at across the board is we will absolutely teach you and train you to do the job you want to do, be it an artist, a psychologist, a lawyer, a politician, things like this. But what we also look at is we want you to think about how can you improve society for everyone around you? How can you as a lawyer make sure that people can follow you as you come through? How can you as a psychologist change the law and make sure there is good provision and support available for people who have needs in this area. Um, all different things like this is what we care about and we're constantly looking at how can we move society forward and how can we make things better. So like I said a second ago, if you're thinking about psychology, we will absolutely train you to be a psychologist. But if you want to work for an NGO, if you want to change the government, change the law, we'll show you how to do that as well. There's lots and lots of routes and opportunities available here. And what we, um, we do at Goldsmith is we care and we try and push these, these ideas forward. To give you an idea of like how good we are at some of the things we do, we have about, I think it's about 14 departments at the university, but about 10 to 12 are considered inside the world's elite. So just some examples here. Um, when we're ranked number fourth in the UK for design and arts. We're third in the UK for psychology research intensity. So this statistic is from 2014, but these um, results are only announced every seven years. So there's a new one announced this year. We're number seven in the world for media, 14th in the world for art and design, 42nd in the world for sociology. We're inside the world's top 100 ecology. I think we're actually ranked the 400th Place to be. And I sort of touched on it earlier. Um, we're ranked inside the UK's top 25 for the quality of our research. Almost every department at Goldsmiths is, has an individual ranking inside the world's top 25 for the quality of their research. Now, some of you here will be thinking about studying an undergraduate degree and be thinking, well, research is postgraduate. How does that affect me? But it's the academics you'll be learning from as an undergraduate student who does that research and they use that research in then what they teach you on an undergraduate program. So it does affect what you learn and how you can then move forward inside each subject area. So again, all boundless ideas for one exciting future. Got some admin here for you, just some general tips. So if you're thinking about applying for an undergraduate program, so this is a bachelor's degree. We take applications through the UCAS system. This is a UK wide system. It's quite easy to navigate. You can apply for up to five universities at one time. The deadline for British students is the 29th of January. But for um, international students, which you will be if you're from Turkey, the deadline is the 30th of June. So still lots of time to apply. 
However, our courses do get full. So I do recommend applying early if you can. So applying earlier than the 30th of June. April, May time, I think, is the best time to apply by. Definitely by May. So that gives you enough time over the summer to think about your finances, get accommodation, all things like this. Big thing with applying to Goldsmiths is we want to know who you are and what you've got to say about yourself. How do you fit into Goldsmiths and why do you want to study this subject area? And you do this in the personal statements. So each program has different academic entry requirements. So these are your grades from school, from university, things like this. But we're really interested in who you are and what you've got to say about yourself. So make sure in your personal statement that shines through. There are some programs that need portfolio, so art and design. Um, for English and creative writing, we sometimes want to see examples of your written work and for journalism, things like this. But it's, we will request this after you've applied. So it's all quite easy to do. Those of you who are thinking about postgraduate programs, these are masters, um, masters of research and also PhDs. You apply direct to Goldsmiths. You don't use the UCAS system. Go onto our website, press the apply now button and it loads a new form for you. There's a, a soft deadline of August 2021. And what we say is that it's, there's not an actual date, but you've got to allow enough time to go through the application process of getting onto the program, getting an offer. You've also got to get your visa, your finance and your accommodation. And your visa can take up to 30 days. So August, those 30 days to September. Our courses begin around the 23rd of September, so you've got to allow enough time. But same as the undergraduate programs, we recommend applying as early as possible. Our courses do get full, we're a popular place to study. The biggest thing though, same as the undergraduate programs, is the personal statements. What we want to see from you for the postgraduate programs is why you've chosen this program which modules have you researched and why do you think they're going to help you and same for the undergraduate people as well what experiences do you have be it at work at school at university what experience do you have and what skills do you have and how are they relevant to what you want to study um, so getting this information out and putting it on the page is the most important thing some programs require portfolios, so again, fine art, design, things like this, and some will include, um, you know, we want to see additional information. So again, journalism, we want to see your written work. There are some programs where we want to see your work experience, but all of this, both for the undergraduate programs and the postgraduate, is listed on each course page. If you've got any questions, get in touch with me and I can help you with it. Almost all the postgraduate programs require an interview. So we'll check your application. If we're happy, we'll offer you an interview. For the undergraduate programs, there's only a handful of programs, so a very small amount that require an interview. But it's quite simple. The interview, we're going to ask you about your personal statement, ask you more information about yourself. If you're applying for an art program, we're gonna ask you about your work and get you to explain that to us. It's all quite simple, it's not very formal, but it's still your chance to show who you are alongside your personal statement and why you should be getting a place at Goldsmiths. Some information for you as well, we have um, the Goldsmiths International Scholarship. So um, this is where we offer amounts of £2,000, £4,000 or £5,000 towards your tuition fees. These are only for international students, so people from Turkey, that's you. There are two deadlines, so the 31st of March, obviously that's only a couple of weeks away, and then the 17th of May. So to be um, able to apply for this, you first have to apply for a program and have an offer of a place. So we said to you, you we want you to study with us. And once you've got that offer, we'll contact you and we'll send you an email saying you can now apply for the scholarship. And what you do is you write a second personal statement, we'll send you this in the instructions, but you write a second personal statement showing why you should get that scholarship. So again, we want to hear about your work experience. Maybe you've done some volunteering, all different things like this, but what are you going to do on the degree? What are you going to do for a career? And the biggest thing we want to know as well is how are you going to use your education to help people? Almost everyone who gets the scholarship is working towards helping society and improving things for people below them. There's information on our website. There's obviously a, a website link here you can't click. If you go to our website, type in international scholarship, you'll find it. It's really easy to find. So some final things to show you as well. Um, some really wonderful support at the university when you with us so we have a dedicated study abroad team so these are people who can help you um, 
you know, maybe you want to go study at another university for a semester, they can help you with that. We have an immigration advisory service. We're one of the best in the UK for this. Um, we work to a 0% rejection rate for visas. So when you come, when you're going to study with us, we help you through the visa application process, but we will make sure that you won't be rejected for the visa. We're so confident in how we work and making sure that you're ready to apply for your visa. We have really great well-being teams and disability support all across the campus. You can find campus support officers. So these are students and members of staff at the university who can give you information on where things are, how to find different facilities, who you need to speak to, all different things like this. We have student advisors and multi-faith chaplaincies. This is a separate building. Um, so whatever religion you are, if or even if you're just spiritual or of no religion, you can go and speak to these people and have some time to yourself and talk through any ideas or issues you may be having. We have the really wonderful student union I spoke about at the start who do the clubs and societies. We have LGBTQ plus groups and supports. But then we have welcome weeks and leavers events. So when you start at university as a new student, especially an international student, we have lots of events for you so you can meet people, understand who the university is. But then also before you leave, again, we have lots of different events that help you get ready for um, going out and finding a career. Also, it's a great chance to have a party and celebrate your success that you've got, you've gone through your studies, you've graduated, all different things like this. So. Almost at the end, so I've got some things to show you now. So like I said earlier, we're part of the University of London. If you don't know, the University of London is a federation of 17 different universities. So Goldsmiths is one, and there's lots of really wonderful prestigious universities like us. So University College London, King's College London, London School of Economics, the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, Queen's Mary University of London, lots of wonderful places. And when you study with us at any one of these universities, you can use the facilities at the other universities. So when you study at Goldsmiths, you can use the libraries of all those different universities. You can get in touch with the different departments there and make appointments to go in and use their facilities if they've got extra equipment that you want to use. <coughs> Excuse me. Or maybe there's um, members of staff that you want to speak to, get extra information. But likewise, we also collaborate across our courses. So a good example is um, the MSc Data Science Programme. This is a master in data science. So we build um, artificial intelligence systems to process large data sets. King's College London contacted our programme to help systems to work on Alzheimer's detection. So there's lots of different things like this that happen. But likewise, across um, the University of London, you're part of this network. And this network has taught 55 presidents and prime ministers, 84 Nobel laureates, and six Grammy winners. So the people you meet during your studies at Goldsmiths could be the next president of a country around the world, could be the next prime minister of Britain. So lots of wonderful people here who will be classmates. In fact, maybe that person is you. So it's a really great place to be part of. So some of the alumni that studied at Goldsmiths, I'm just going to show you through some of these people. So the filmmaker Steve McQueen, he was the first black director to win a Best Picture Oscar at the Oscar Awards in Hollywood. Uh, he won for his film 12 Years a Slave that was released in 2013. Um, he actually recently had, um, he's an, also an artist, not just a film director. Um, and he had a really big exhibition of all of his work at one of our most famous galleries, the Tate Modern. And it was really, really amazing to see just how much he's done. Also, he's got a collection of films studying race and identity in Britain available on the BBC website, and they're called Small Acts. Really recommend you watching them. They're brilliant. We've also taught people like James Blake, who's won the Mercury Prize and the Ivor Novello Award, which are really top music prizes. Some of you will know James Blake. Some of you may not, but I'm sure you'll know some of his work. He's worked with people like Travis Scott and Kendrick Lamar. We've also taught fashion designers like Mary Quant and Margaret Howell. Again, these are names you may know if you're into fashion, but if you don't, you'll certainly know some of their work. So Mary Quant um, is a fashion designer who was mainly famous in the 60s and 70s, but she is the original designer of the miniskirt. She is the person that made the miniskirt popular. So there'll be lots of you who'll be wearing miniskirts or your friends do. She's the person that did this and she studied at Goldsmiths. 
We've taught some really amazing novelists, so writers who've written books, Evie Wilde, John, Hay John Harvey, and Ross Raisin. Um, so, you know, like I said, award-winning novelists. But then also people like Simon Hale, Adrian Sutton, and Paul Englishby. So these are composers who have won awards like BAFTAs, Olivier's, Emmy, and Tony Awards. So these are awards that are really, really big, both in Britain and America. Um, so they've won these awards for the music that they've written for different performances. Then likewise, we've also taught people like Rob Stringer and Terry Felgate, who are the chair of the Sony Music uh, Group in the US record company, and also Terry Felgate, Felgate for, who was the former MD of um, EMI Records. We've also taught seven uh, winners of the Turner Prize. So the Turner Prize is the top um, award in the UK for art. So our most famous recipient of that is Damien Hurst, who studied with us. He's possibly one of the most famous artists in the world today, but also a really great fact for you here, every single member of our arts um, department has been nominated for the Turner Prize. So if you study for art with us, excuse me, you'll be studying with people whose work is amazing. They've been nominated for it. This is a really, really great thing. But these are obviously lots of really wonderful, famous people who have done really, really big things that get written about in the press. But the people we're most proud of is the 336 psychologists, the 487 social workers, 882 designers, the 7,308 teachers, and the 1,840 historians that we've taught at this university. So these are people that may not be famous, like Hollywood famous, but these people have gone on to do amazing things in our society and try and improve things for everyone around us. That's why I keep on saying, like, this is what Goldsmiths is all about, is how can we help and how can we push things forward? So, Final thing to say to you. So firstly, I just want to say thank you again for, for coming and for sitting through this. This photo I actually took on, you can just see a plane wing at the top left. I'm on a plane on a flight back from Berlin in Germany. If you ever fly from Berlin to London, um, take the British Airways flight, sit on the right hand side of the plane and it flies through the center of London. You get this amazing view. I think it's a really great chance, even though I took the photo, it's a really great chance to see um, just what makes London. From all the different modern buildings like the Shard, you can see that kind of in the middle where the big train station is. At the bottom you can see our history, the Tower of London, that kind of castle looking building. That's going to be a thousand years old in 2070. Um, the Tower Bridge just at the bottom, that's the one that my granddad used to work at. Then you can see again some more modern buildings. There's a building on the right, it looks a bit like a, I guess a cone, we call it the Gherkin. The top, there's some other buildings, if you know it, you'll, you can see it's called the Barbican, a really amazing piece of post-war architecture. Um, so there's lots of things you can see here, just in this photo. And also top left, you can just see it sticking out, is the Houses of Parliament. But inside this photo is basically a lot of the city, a lot of our history, and also a lot of our future, like where we're going. And this is a really wonderful place to be. So again, thank you so much for sitting through this. Here's my contact details again. They're also in the chat window. Um, so there's my email address and my phone number, some links to our Twitter, our YouTube, our Instagram, and our Facebook. Really great chance to see the campus, to hear from our students. Again, there's loads of YouTube links in that chat window that I put um, in there. But if you guys have got any questions, I think some have been coming through. I'm gonna stop sharing this now and um, come back to the platform. I'm really happy to go through the questions with you. So, oh, so yeah, so I'm gonna go through the questions that have come in in the, the chat window. Um, Hi, Jake, uh, I do you have a few questions in the questions box? Yes, yeah, in the questions box, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so the first question is, um, can we start face-to-face -face learning by September? Will you offer online courses next year? So yeah, this is actually a really great question. I was thinking about this earlier because I didn't include this information in the presentation. So this year, the one we're in right now, this academic year. Britain has been obviously going through the pandemic, same as everyone else. Um, what we've done this year, because the government has done lots of lockdowns, so almost all, in fact, all of our programs are online. Students were here in September, but the government made a lockdown. So some students stayed, but some people just returned to their home countries and they've been able to take all their programs online. Where we are at the moment is the UK has got a really um, positive and aggressive vaccination policy. Um, so at the moment, lots and lots of people have been vaccinated. So we're planning that September will be open and will be normal. All of our restrictions are going to end in June. So if everything works, fingers crossed, 
we will be open and teaching will be here on the campus. So we're planning this, we're planning for a normal year. However, if the pandemic gets worse, if it comes back, we're extremely well placed to move all of our programs online. You can study from Turkey, you can study from London, you can study from California. Up to you where you are, you can take the programs online. However, just to recap, just to re uh, sort of repeat, we're planning face-to-face -face learning this September. So to be here in the UK. So if you're applying to us, that's what you should be aiming for, but be aware that the courses may be online. I think that's the right approach. Um, the next question is a really wonderful question. Can international students get work permits in the UK after graduation? So yes, last year, Evet arkadaşlar Jake düştü. Biraz beklemenizi rica edeceğiz. Bu sırada sorularınızı questions kısmından sorabilirsiniz. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, welcome back. Hi, I'm not sure what happened there. I just just left and came back. It's all right. Um, so anyway, I was just saying um, last year the government changed the rules. So what happens now is you get a visa to study with us. So when you're studying with us, that visa has written on it that you can work for 15 to 20 hours per week. So you can take any job, be it in a cafe, a bar, or in an office, in a design studio, whatever you like, as long as it's only for 15 to 20 hours maximum per week. When you've finished, you can apply for a new visa, still with the university, um, but this allows you to stay in the UK for two years, and you can work full-time jobs. You can work any job. So you can work at McDonald's, you can work in a supermarket, you can work as a psychologist, you can work as our prime minister. It's up to you. You've got two years. At the end of the two years, if you want to stay, you'll have to get that company, if that's the place you want to work, you'll have to get that company to sponsor you for a new visa. Otherwise, you would have to leave the UK. But you've got two years now. Before, it was just four months. So yes, two years to study in the UK after you've graduated. This is uh, really, really good. Um, the next question is, um, is there any flexibility about deadlines this year? Um, well, in terms of the deadlines for undergraduate programs, just to recap, the deadline is the 30th of June. So that's for anyone thinking about a bachelor's degree. So that is a hard deadline. Like you've got to apply by then. Um, what happens after June, um, around the end of July, there's a system called clearing. Now, what that is, is that is if any university has spaces left, you can apply into clearing and you can actually apply that day and get a space. But you shouldn't count on it. That shouldn't be your plan because some universities will be full. Like you, if you wait for clearing, you may miss the course that you want to be on. But things do happen. Some universities are not full. Some programs that you think are really popular won't be full. There is a chance you should try and apply before June for the undergraduate programs. For the postgraduate programs, there isn't a system called clearing. You've got until August to apply. Um, but with both postgraduate, the master's programs, and undergraduate, the bachelor's programs, apply early, get the space, then you can start doing your visa application, you can apply for accommodation, you can sort your finances, give yourself the time to make sure you're ready to come to the UK. Um, so yeah, here's another great question. What is the price range for postgraduate programs? Um, so almost all of our programs are about £17,000 per year. So undergraduate programs are three years long. Those bachelor's degrees, they're three years long. So £17,000 per year. The postgraduate programs are usually just one year. So for your program, you'll pay £17,000. There are some programs that are more expensive. So for the postgraduate program, um, our Masters of Fine Arts, so a year of studying art, and, and you get to use all of our studios, you get your own studio space. This program is about £22,000. There are some programs that are a little bit cheaper. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but the price is usually about £16,000. But yeah, £17,000 for both undergraduate and postgraduate is kind of our average price. Um, the next question, um, can international students work during studying? I kind of said this a second ago, but just to repeat, yes. So for both postgraduate and undergraduate programs, so 
bachelor's and master's, your visa will state that you can work 15 to 20 hours per week. And this is actually a really good amount of time. What you've got to think about is balancing your study and your work whilst you're with us. Obviously, your study should be most important because that's what you're here to do. But finances, right? You need some extra money. Like I did it when I went to university. You've got to be able to eat, go out, have fun. So having a job can be really important. But 15 to 20 hours, that's a good amount of time. That's about three days. So you could work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then have Monday to Thursday in university. There's things like that. However you work it, there's things like that you can do. Um, so the next question, how about a minimum GPA for art programs? Does it matter if we have good portfolio? So our undergraduate programs, almost every program we ask for in UK marks, so A-levels, B, B, B, three subjects, three Bs. We quite often don't say what subject we want them in because we're open to different backgrounds. But in your personal statement, you've got to say how what you studied is relevant to what you then want to study with us. So it's, it, it's not impossible to change subjects, but be aware that most students applying for psychology will have studied psychology in school. Most people supplying for art would have studied art in school. So if you want to change, just be aware that there will be people doing that. Um, for postgraduate programs, what we require is usually a UK degree with a mark of 2-2. So that's a UK classification. It's about 60%. Um, we have lots of different equivalent charts on our website. So you can work out what qualification you need. So obviously I'm giving you the UK marks right now, but we it's on the website. But if you've got any questions about what qualification you have, contact me. I can go through it with you and we can work it out. For art, the portfolio is possibly the most important piece. Um, you know, the portfolio and the personal statement. We really want to see who you are as an artist, how you explain your art, what you've got to say about yourself. So yes, having a good portfolio does matter. And also, like I said earlier, we are 14th in the world for art. So it's an incredibly competitive place to get into for art programs. Well worth it if you can get here, definitely try it. But when you're applying for all programs, put your best foot forward make sure your application is as good as it can be. Um, so the next question, is it possible um, to transfer credit from a university from Turkey? Um, I'm not totally sure about this one. In the UK, it's possible to transfer between universities. It's difficult. But what we have to do is we have to look at what the university, the other university teaches and make sure it's the same as what we teach or at least complements what we teach in Goldsmiths. Um, and if it is, you can then transfer. For an international student, it's difficult because your visa is attached to the university. It doesn't say you can study anywhere. But your actual question is transferring from Turkey to the UK. So I'm not sure. I think the system will be the same. But if you wouldn't mind, if you could email me, my email is in that chat window. Um, I will be more than happy to look at your situation and see if we can find a route forward. Um, so I'm sorry, I can't give you a proper answer now. Um, the next question, can international students get uh, work permits while study? I kind of answered this, but just to repeat, yes, your visa to study says on it, you can work in the UK, so 15 to 20 hours per week. So that's there for you. Uh, what GPA do you need for computer science? Um, so what we require for computer science, the BSc, the bachelor program. So at A level, we need BBB. So this is usually around, I want to say 60 to 70%. Um, so GPA, if it's out of four, um, this will be about a 2.6. But if you wouldn't mind, um, you can email me, tell me what qualifications you've got um, and we can go through it. But yeah, around a 2.6 out of four, that should be what we what we ask for. Uh, so the next question, do you offer pre-sessional English if we can reach required um, level? Can we get conditional offer? So yes, sorry, I just need some water. So yes, um, first things first, um, to study with us for the undergraduate programs, you'll need an IELTS with a score of 6.0, with 6.0 in writing, and then nothing lower than 5.5 in the remaining components. 
However, there are lots of different qualifications that we take. These are all on our website. If you type in English language requirements, you'll find them. But again, if you've got any questions, contact me. I'll go through it with you. Um, if you don't have the um, required level or if you don't have your marks yet, um, we can give you what's called a conditional offer. So the condition will be get the English uh, qualification. Um, if you can't meet if you can't meet the requirements in time, we do offer pre-sessional English. So for those that don't know, these are five, nine, or twelve week long programs that happen over the summer, and these are delivered so that you can then improve your English in time to make the requirements to start the program in September. This summer, because we're not sure where the pandemic will be, we're doing all of our programs online. We've made the decision early. We just don't want students to be buying flights or booking accommodation because it's not actually that far away. Um, excuse me. So these will be online before you come and study with us. Um, but yes, you can you can get offers for the pre-session English program. Um, for the postgraduate programs, just to recap, you usually need a score of either 6.5 or 7.0 in the IELTS. Again, all the information is on the website. Uh, so the next question. Um, are there internship opportunities during our education? Yes. So what we do, what you may see at some other universities is that um, in your three-year program, there may be a one-year full-time internship. Um, for a, a postgraduate degree, there may be a three-month or a six-month internship. Goldsmiths, we don't do that. We have one or two programs that do a full year, but the way we look at it is we offer what's called work placements. And these are a module inside your program. And what we do is you would work at a company, like a relevant company, for two to three days per week. And then the other two to three days per week, you're back at the university studying and learning from us. And the reason why we do this is this allows you to use your work inside your education, but also your education inside your work live and in real time. Sometimes when you go do a year as a year's internship, you may be stuck doing the photocopying. You may have a really great experience, but then have to quit to then come back and do a final year at university when it may have been better for you just to keep on working. So we look at it that way. We're not saying everyone's wrong and we're right, but just this is what works for us. Work whilst you study. There's lots of really great opportunities. And even if there isn't a work placement, like actually going to work for a company, we do lots of what's called live briefs. <clears throat> so our design program, so graphic design, interior design, things like this, companies come in and set a brief and you've got to develop work for it. So they'll, you'll be working alongside them in a real world environment. Likewise, there are lots of opportunities to collaborate with different universities and students at different organizations as well. So there's lots of really great opportunities. Final thing to add to this as well, obviously you're asking about internships during study, but when you graduate from Goldsmiths, so we're part of the University of London, like I talked about earlier, um, the University of London has a careers website and it's a really fabulous service that helps you find employment. The University of London is the largest university in Britain, has about 300,000 students and some of the most prestigious universities in the world are members of this group. So companies from all around the world are looking to employ you because you studied at Goldsmiths at the University of London. And this website is actually the largest careers website in Europe and only University of London students can access it. So I work for Goldsmiths, I work for the University of London, but I'm not a student, so I don't get to use it. Only you guys can. So it's a really, really great resource. Um, the next question, um, is there any GPA requirement for postgraduate programs? Um, I kind of touched on this earlier. So I said um, the mark that we need from a UK degree is a 2-2. Um, some programs need a 2-1. So 2-2 is about 60%. A 2-1 is about 70%. So again, a GPA requirement, if it's out of 4.0, if your highest mark is 4.0, around a 2.6, that would be the requirement. But again, contact me. I can go through it with you before you apply. We can make sure you've got everything together and find the, uh, the best routes for you. Uh, and then the final question, I think, um, so what are the housing options for first-year students? So, sorry, I should have actually spoken about this earlier. Um, the accommodation for international students, which you guys are, we guarantee spaces in our accommodation for you. So there are 1,400 spaces available at our accommodation. The way you guarantee a room for yourself 
Firstly, apply for a program, get an offer. So like I said earlier, Goldsmith says to you, we want you to study here. You have a place if you want it. When you've got that offer, you can then apply for accommodation. The application window for accommodation is between April and June. The dates are about to be announced. Um, you can apply any time in those three months. It doesn't matter if it's the first day or the last day. We don't look at it until it's closed in June. What will then happen is we will give you a room. You apply for three, so you apply in order of preference, so which rooms you want, and we will give you one of those rooms. Um, so you'll always have a place to stay. This applies to both postgraduate and undergraduate students. For undergraduate students, so this is just a tradition. It's not the rules, it's just tradition. You can stay in those halls for all three years. You have to apply each year, but you can stay. However, what we all do, what I did, what all my friends did, is you stay in the halls, the accommodation for the first year. You make friends with your flatmates, or maybe you make friends with people on your course, or from maybe you have a job, you make friends there. You then go and find a house or a flat somewhere else to live, like a private accommodation. Sounds quite scary, but it's really easily done. And it's get, you, you get a chance to choose who you're going to live with. When you live in the university accommodation, you're put with random people. We try and make sure that maybe you're on a similar course or from a similar area of the world, but it's a good chance to meet people. So, you know, everyone's in the same position. They're out to make friends. They've moved there on their own. So you'll quickly become friends with your flatmates. But at the end of the year, you may be thinking, well, actually, that person on the course, I really like them and I want to live with them. So it's an option to then go and do that. Likewise, to add to this, you don't have to take our accommodation. You can rent privately. You can absolutely do this. We're not stopping you. You can do whatever you like. However, if you haven't rented in London before, you may not know how the system works. It may be confusing, but we have our accommodation team and they've got a list of approved landlords, people that we've checked, that we know are safe, their houses are clean, they're not gonna steal your money, everything's gonna be good. So work with us, speak to our accommodation team, we can help find it uh, with you. But if you have your own links, if you wanna do it your own, absolutely, go do that and that's, that's not an issue. Um, I think, that might be it. I'm just checking the chat window. Oh, I've just seen all the messages. Everyone's saying hello. So, you know, hello, everyone. Sorry, I should have said that at the start. It's really, really lovely for everyone to say hello. Um, I think that's all the questions. Um, if you guys have any more, I, you know, again, obviously, I think we've got like a couple of minutes left. But if you go into the chat window, there's my email address, there's my phone number, send me emails, send me text messages. If you want to arrange like a private video call, we can. We use Zoom and Microsoft Teams. Like, I'm always happy to have a chat. But yeah, if there's no more questions, I just want to say thank you so much for, for, for coming today. It's been really lovely being able to present to you guys. I hope I've answered your questions. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, thank you very much, Nick, uh, for your great presentation. And uh, you put a real of answering all of the questions. We believe it was a really and informative for the attendees. Also, I would like to Thank you again, Jake, for the pleasure to Oh, it's been great. Thank you so much for having me. It's been really lovely being here today. And uh, thank you, everyone, for attending. Okay, thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.